Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 12th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you my weekly Arctic weather, sea ice and climate update. So we've got a good amount of information to impart. So let's get to it. Looking at this Uni Bremen map of sea ice concentration, we should note that refreeze is occurring in the Arctic on net, but we still have large areas of open water ranging the Arctic with refreeze being resisted by warmer than normal ocean and warmer than normal air temperatures over a wide range of, of regions. The Northeast Passage near Siberia remains open, although the Northwest Passage has been closed now for a couple of weeks. With the expansion of sea ice into sections of the Beaufort Sea and into the Canadian Archipelago. It's worth noting that Baffin and Hudson Bay remain clear, as do wide regions of the Arctic in general. Looking at Arctic sea ice extent as measured by JAXA, just like to point out that Arctic sea ice extent right now is about third lowest on record for the date. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight every year since the year 2000 to show you where we are at present with Arctic sea ice extent now measuring 5.18 million square kilometers according to JAXA that's about three and a half million square kilometers below the 1980s average for this date and just about 500,000 square kilometers above the record low set in 2012. It's worth noting that the sea ice has been very resistant to melt as we've moved into, into the fall season. And this is due in large part to much warmer than normal air temperatures and ocean temperatures in the Arctic environment. This sideways movement and resistance, uh, well, sideways, sideways movement in the graph and resistance to refreeze has resulted in Arctic sea ice at times hitting second lowest on record for multiple days. We'll have to just look and keep an eye on things to see if the size sideways movement continues. It appears likely that that has been the trend for recent years as polar amplification ha has tended to amp up in recent years with global temperatures hitting a range of one to 1.2 degrees Celsius above average and a lot of that energy transferring into the Arctic zone. Over the past week, we saw a lot of energy transfer starting to move up through the Atlantic side with storms heralding a movement of warmer air from the Atlantic side. We've had quite a bit of warm air transferring in from the Pacific and from Siberia. The Atlantic transfer now appears to be in play. And this is something that we expect as we move more and more into fall to see the ocean zones become more active as avenues for energy transfer into the Arctic. In this most recent event, we also saw a very strong storm accompanying this movement of warm air into the Arctic from the Atlantic with a with with minimum central pressures in the 960 millibar range. I'm just going to go ahead and provide you with a couple more views of this storm. Funneling over the Laptev Sea on October 7th with very strong winds running in through both the Kara and, and the Laptev Sea regions. And this storm moved toward the pole in this on the subsequent day and, and did weekend weekend over the past couple of days. Looking at the temperature map, you can see the large synoptic airflows running up from the Atlantic over Europe and up into the Arctic as well as from the Siberian side with a bulge of warmer than normal air 
running in through the Pacific side as well. You can also see this ener energy transfer ongoing through the anomaly maps provided by the global forecast system model with the Pacific zone contributing warm air over Alaska and over the Bering Sea and up into the Chukchi and East Siberian Sea, as well as through ridge zone running up through central Siberia with the Atlantic and the European zone contributing warm air flows as well. It is something I'd like to point out that the Arctic is now at 4.4 degrees Celsius above normal for this time of year, which is very significant, a very significant temperature spike for the Arctic. And over the next few days, the temperature is expected to spike even further up to as high as five degrees Celsius above normal for the Arctic as a whole, with regions of the Arctic seeing temperatures ranging from 10 to 15 to to the upper teens above average in the Celsius degree measure. Looking at sea surface temperatures, I just like to also point out that sea surface temperature anomalies remain very, very high in the Pacific region, particularly over the Bering Sea and the Chukchi Sea, lending impetus to the energy transfer that we're seeing on the atmospheric level. But sea surface temperatures also through the LAPTEV and Kara Seas also remain significantly above average with sea surface temperatures in the Bering Sea ranging from one to three degrees Celsius above average as well. So very warm oceans surrounding the Arctic, which are helping to prevent sea ice refreeze, even though, even though we do have a refreeze signal at this time. Looking at the visible satellite shot, I'd just like to let you guys know we've, we had some questions about this black spot in, in the visible satellite shot. What happens is as the Earth's angle toward the sun or away from the sun tilts in the Arctic toward winter, you, you get less satellite coverage over the central Arctic zone, and this results in a, in a black spot in the satellite picture. But we can still see the ice-free regions in the Beaufort and Chukchi and East Siberian Sea running in through the Laptev and Kara Seas, despite the fact that the, the dark zone is, is starting to broaden with polar night. i just like to also point out that we still have wildfire hotspots in Siberia with a couple running up into the Arctic on the Siberian side. It's very odd to see wildfires continuing to burn into October, but we do have that visible in the satellite shot this time on the Russian side. Although wildfire activity at this time is, is very mild and very moderate, we don't see energetic wildfires in this zone at present, but it's it's pretty concerning to see wildfires at all at this time of year. I, we have some more time, so I'd just like to again point out how far above normal the high Arctic is starting to, to get with, with regards to temperature anomalies. And the temperature, temperature spikes we're seeing in the high Arctic right now are, are very extreme, very extraordinary, much more like temperatures that we would typically see in September and perhaps even during late August at the peak of the, the recent temperature spike we saw at the 80 to 90 degree north latitude zone near the pole. So just a overview of ongoing weather conditions for the Arctic and at present we have quite a lot of heat transfer into the Arctic with much warmer than normal temperatures invading the Arctic at this time, resisting refreeze and, and overall providing us a very strong signal of polar amplification, which is a state of climate where the poles tend to warm faster than the rest of the globe as atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations in, increase, in particular in the Arctic, and in particular in the Arctic during fall, winter, and spring.